Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to ESPN Classics Top 5 Reasons You Can't Blame. January 4th, 2006, USC and Texas in the Rose Bowl playing one of the most thrilling national championships in collegiate sports history. After five lead changes, a decisive moment came with 2.13 left in the game. Up 38-33, the Trojans faced a 4th and 2 on the Longhorns 45. USC coach Pete Carroll decided to go for it. Texas held. And 10 plays later, quarterback Vince Young took it in for the winning touchdown. Carroll has been second-guessed ever since. Had he decided to punt, say his critics, the Trojans might well have won a third straight national championship. In this show, we'll count down our top five reasons you can't blame Pete Carroll for USC losing to Texas in the 2006 Rose Bowl. But first, let's examine the case against him. To me, USC was the greatest, most dynamic, most balanced team in the history of college football. Touchdown! They had everything that they needed to have. They had, you know, they had the pass offense and they had the run offense, and they had the run offense too deep. This is Lindale wide up the middle, touchdown number 21. And every time I touched the ball, I felt like I could have scored. Reggie Bush to the corner. Arguably the top quarterback in the history of college football. Leonard drops the throw, throws it down the sideline, and he makes the catch. You're not going to stop Matt Leonard, Lindell White, Reggie Bush. Here comes Reggie Bush. Coming off the two straight national championships, the Heisman trophies, the undefeated string, if they beat Texas, they are the greatest college football team of all time. It was a heady time for USC. The Trojans were riding a 34-game winning streak and had won back-to-back -back national titles. Two of their stars, quarterback Matt Leiner and tailback Reggie Bush, owned Heisman trophies. Greatness seemed too small a word for what they'd accomplished. As perhaps history's most heralded college football team rolled into the 2006 Rose Bowl, the consensus picked the Trojans to beat Texas and win a third straight national title. They were favored by seven and a half points. We definitely felt like we came out and played like we knew how we were going to blow this team away. Welcome, baby. Let's get it on. Now it's put up time. Texas, riding its own 19-game winning streak, played tougher than many expected, scoring 16 straight points in the second quarter. The Longhorns led by six at the half. Touchdown to Selvin Young. In the second half, USC's vaunted offense gathered momentum and scored touchdowns on four straight possessions. Touchdown, USC. Handoff, White up the middle. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, USC. Delayed handoff. Reggie going around the outside. He's got the 25-20. Up the sideline. He's at the 10-5 dive. And it is a touchdown, USC. Leinert's 22-yard pass to Dwayne Jarrett put the Trojans up by 12 with 6.42 left in the fourth quarter. The Longhorns' prospects were not bright. Game's over. Game's over. They'll make a run. They might score. They may kick a field goal. They're not going to win the football game at that point. We felt like we had them where we wanted them, and all we had to do was just maintain. Break out the championship hats and T-shirts. There's absolutely no way they lose that game when they're up by 12. The one thing I remember is glancing down on the sidelines and saying, okay, what's Vince doing now or whatever, and his head is bobbing around, and he just looks like he's still loosening up, and he's like, God, he doesn't get it. This should, game should be over now. That was a dynasty story we were all writing, the dynasty. As you're typing this, you're watching out of the, you know, one eye, Vince Young going up and you know, down the field. There he goes. Young looks to throw. Now, darts back to the right side. He's got running room. Vince, hook to the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Texas. Trojans lead is 38 to 33. After Texas pulled within five, USC began working the clock with running plays. With 2.13 left, Carroll was faced with perhaps the toughest sideline decision of his career. going to be four. And about two from the 45. I think he's going to go for it here. What a call it would be because that would give Texas a short field. Punt the ball. Kick the ball. When I saw him do that, I was like, punt the football. Punt the football. Fourth and two is a, is a tough thing to get. You want to be national champion? 
and you're in this situation, yeah. I think you might want to punt. The risk is great. Fourth and two is different than fourth and one, which they failed to convert earlier in the game already. Carroll made the call. Go for it. Here's the ball game right here. Yes, sir. Here's the game right here. All in one nutshell. Weinert under center. He'll hand off to White. He didn't get it. The Longhorns stop it. At the 44-yard line, Texas is held, and the Longhorns take over. Are you kidding me? Following the Trojans' failure to convert on fourth down, Young stepped into the heat of the national limelight and proved himself worthy of all the Big 12 had been saying about him. If you were in the stadium, you know what was coming. If you were sitting at home and watching, you knew what was coming. Looks, fires to the right, caught by Carter at the 20, to the 15, and Brian... Then with the ball on the USC 9, with 26 seconds left, Young took the snap. Fourth and five, the Trojans need a miracle. Vince looks, under pressure, he'll tuck it in run, Vince to the five, Young, touchdown Texas, touchdown Vince Young, he's done it again, Vince Young has given the Longhorns the lead. As time expired, Carroll could only watch as Texas stormed the field in celebration of its 41-38 victory. The Texas Longhorns are college football national champion. Although USC's incredible ride was over, the longest day after of Carroll's life began. What a stupendously controversial move that was. I didn't think it was a good call at the time, and I don't think it is now. If we punt the ball, there's more distance between him and victory. Maybe, maybe he runs out of time. To punt the ball, make the other team go the length of the field. If there are 19 seconds left in the game, and he's 35 yards from the end zone, time for one play. You finally have an alley. If your defense can't stop him, maybe the clock can. It's just this percentage move. Every good, solid NFL coach does that. I thought that was Pete Carroll. Hubris. Pete Carroll put himself into the state of mind that whatever I call is true. Not once did he say, you know what, maybe that play is not going to work. Not only was Carroll vilified for making the call, he was ridiculed for not having the right man on the field. I fully expected Reggie Bush to, like, spin, dive, put a cape on and fly. And then all of a sudden you're like, where's, wait. Oh my God, he left Reggie Bush on the sidelines. You know, I, honestly, you know, I, I don't know why. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why. People ask me all the time why I wasn't in the game. Where was Reggie Bush? The president of Troy. He wasn't on the field. Lendale was on the field. If nothing else, Reggie Bush can push him for the first down. He's shown he can do it. Oh, you gotta have Bush in there for the push, don't you? The... Reggie Bush was not on the field when Southern California needed critical play. I don't understand why that happened. The slightest miscalculation cost them the Rose Bowl, cost them an unprecedented third national championship. One of the most egregious coaching errors of our time and space performed by Pete Carroll, it was not just a loss of a national championship. It was a loss to make some serious history. All right, you've seen the case against Pete Carroll. Now, before we give you our top five reasons why you can't blame him, here are a few reasons that didn't make the short list. We call them the best of the rest. After further review. First down, Texas. Young's got it, gonna run it. In a perfect world, Carroll would never have had to make that call. Way back in the second quarter, Texas scored when Young lateraled as he was being tackled. He fixed it out. Looked like he might have been down, didn't it, Kate? Yeah, he did. To the outside. He went down on one knee and pitched it forward to the running back, went into the end zone for a touchdown, and there was no replay of it. He's down. They're going to have to check this He's one down. out, take these points off the board. And it was very clearly down ball, dead ball, and a foul because his knee was on the ground and the ball was pitched forward, and we couldn't find out why there was no replay. Can't believe they're not reviewing this one. This is huge. That was too big a moment, too big a ball game, too big an audience to let things like that happen. Another best of the rest, the Rose Bowl. And gets away and no. Unbelievable. No. In the 2005 Rose Bowl against Michigan, Texas trailed 37-35 with three minutes to go. Not to worry. 
Young took over on his own 32 and marched the Longhorns down the field for the game-winning field goal. Good. Texas win. If Pete Carroll punts in that situation, it's deja vu going back to the Rose Bowl from the previous year when Michigan watched Young win the game. He had done it in the same venue, in the same situation the year before. Pete knew that. Pete Carroll was shook by what he had seen the previous year. For it to play out the same way it did, had to get in his head. He's human. Vince Young's not. If you're Pete Carroll in getting ready for this game, you've seen Vince Young do this before. On fourth and two, you have to go for it and not give him another opportunity to beat you. Student body left, student body right. The Trojan tradition of ground dominance. Gets a block. Student body right simply means this. We're all going that way. It is the entire student body running right, and we didn't have a problem telling you that we were running right, and we'd still run it. Sounds pretty simple. You get uh, great back, some 300-pound linemen, throw the pitch the ball out one way, you know, left or right, and nobody's going to stop you. Probably no college football team has carried the ball more effectively than USC. You immediately think of O.J. Simpson slicing and dicing through the UCLA defense. Simpson at the 10-5. I heard all the stories about run to daylight with uh, Vince Lombardi and all that. But this was run to nothing. There's nobody out there. They just would zip down the field. If it was John McKay, he would have yelled across. He would have said, we're going student body left right now. Good luck. It was this idea that we're bigger than you are, and we're better than you are, and we're just going to run you over. With two star running backs and a massive offensive line, USC dominated the ground game like Trojan teams of the past. He does, he's locked out a lot of green, say goodbye, Ricky Bush. Carroll's decision to go for it on fourth and two was made with tradition and talent at his back. This is a team that almost 50% of the time throughout the year went for it on fourth downs. There was no other decision to be made. You can almost hear Carroll thinking, this is what we do. You've seen us go do that in the past, and, and our way of thinking is you're going for it all the time. If you're going to make one play for the championship, you're comfortable as a coach at USC running the ball for a couple yards. Based on the history of running backs at USC, Pete Carroll had no reason to think that Lendale White wasn't going to come through in the big situation when he needed to. One down, four to go. Here is reason number four. The streak. 38 yards out for a cow victory. It is good, and Cal pulls the upset. After losing to Cal 34-31 in triple overtime, September 27, 2003, the Trojans went on a tear. Based on his history with a team that had won 34 in a row and had always come through when they needed to in the big situation, there was absolutely no reason to think, if you were Pete Carroll, that your team wasn't going to come through again. For basically the better part of three years, every decision that Pete Carroll had made had gone absolutely right and had fallen into place. If you believe in your team and you've seen the things they've done, over and over and over again, then you believe in that gamble. Because these guys, I, I mean, it was like they had magic dust. They could just sprinkle on the, on the scene and they could write the perfect ending. Liner stacked at the 15, and there are two plays left for the Trojans national championship dream. Never was the Trojans' power of faith more evident than in the epic battle at Notre Dame in 2005. With a minute and a half left in the fourth quarter, USC trailed 31-28. It seems impossible. You need three points in the next minute, 32 seconds, and you're 60, make it 74 yards away. Fourth and nine at the 26. Yeah. He throws, looking for Garrett. It's caught by Garrett, the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Tackle from behind. After converting on fourth down, Carroll elected to go for glory. Liner sneaks towards the goal line. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, USC! With three seconds to go. The Trojans have scored. That game's over. No matter what the situation, they seem to win. I think what happened is Pete Carroll believed in his kids because his kids continued to do the impossible. 
he has to go for it uh, for one reason, because he knows he's going to make it. He'd never been in a situation where it hadn't always come up roses. You can blame the streak if you want, because the streak gave Pete Carroll ultimate confidence in his team. Bushwhacked or bad timing. With USC leading 7-0 early in the second quarter, Heisman Trophy winner Reggie Bush caught a screen pass from Matt Leiner at midfield. And suddenly at the end of the run, he laterals to some guy no one ever heard of. Ball fumble! Texas has got it! That was just in the heat of the moment. It was me trying to be a playmaker. And in big games like that, you know, you can't afford to do that, especially when you're playing against a team like Texas. That's crazy. That's, that's so far out of line with what, the way we think and perform that I can't even tell you how to, I can't even imagine how to explain that one. That was a fundamental error that they don't make. Lateral at the end of a long run to some schmegeggy who no one knows. It was some, I don't even know who he lateral to again i don't think pete carroll knew who that guy was i don't think pete carroll had uh, waved a wand and said reggie lateral that ball as we're going in for a score he's trying to lateral the ball is what he was doing keith he saw a teammate out to the side and he's got to be upset with himself for that bonehead play trojans lost the ball and texas went down to score if you figure sc comes away with at least a field goal done there's no way texas can come back you know, they scored off of it, so it was a big momentum swinger for them. That was the game. It wasn't the fourth and two. It was the lateral from hell that killed Troy that day at the Rose Bowl. Have we begun to change your mind yet? If not, take a look at reason number two. Texas was invincible. By 10 to the 5, Mitchell, touchdown, Texas. I asked Mac Brown after the game if he was surprised that he went for it. And he said, no. He said, because they couldn't stop us no matter we, where we got the ball. And Vince Young throws, and it is completed. Vince Young's performance in the 2006 Rose Bowl ranks among the most brilliant in college football. He was on his way to a Rose Bowl record 467 yards, 200 on the ground, and 267 in the air. Harrell was well aware of what Young might do. He knew if he gave it back to Vince Young, there was going to be a percent chance he was going to run out score, whether it's 80 yards away or 60. You know, everybody says that. Oh, well, if you had just punted the ball, then he had to go 90 yards. He would have made it 90 yards. You could have punted him back 400 yards, and Vince Young may have still scored. It looked like electric football. One giant man standing there and four or five people leaping at his knees and not able to bring him down. I don't think you can question the call because Pete's thinking was... I don't want the ball back in his hands to decide the game. To win the game, the only thing USC could have done was to stop Vince Young, and that wasn't going to happen. Why you made it? Yeah, it's it's, it's real simple. It's really yeah. simple. Uh -huh. Whether they get it there, we try to kick it down there and kick it 20 yards farther. It ain't going to make a big difference. Here's Vince Young, wants to run it, gets outside, and the first man didn't get it. He's seen they're not going to stop this guy, and he's seen Lendell White fly up the middle all day. And I'm sure he talked to his coordinator saying, What's going to change? Now what? Can we stop VY? And they probably said no. Young, let me see him. He breaks down the driver. This is the 30. And he's the 25 and down to the 20. The only thing that could have stopped Vince Young was Lundell White getting the first down on fourth and two. That's, to me, the only thing that could have stopped him. Michael Huff. On that fourth and two play, there was one player most responsible for shutting it down, and that was Michael Huff, the safety for Texas. Huff had won the Thorpe Award as the best defensive back in the nation. That is Huff! He'll take it to the house! A four-year starter, Huff emerged as Texas's top defensive playmaker. He smelled big moments and reacted on instinct. USC had run the exact same play three times for touchdowns earlier in the game with Lendell White. Michael Huff got an impulse, did something he hadn't done all the game of safety, and he, he just jumped into the play and kind of messed it up. And he came from somewhere that the guards hadn't seen, and he bottled it up. And it's funny, because I remember Lendell White saying afterwards he wasn't supposed to be there, but he reacted, and that blew it up. Nine guys in the box. 
and uh, the Texas Longhorns had a great surge on that one. A huff saw something, reacted, and just said, all right, well, if we're going to lose, this is the way it's going to be. And he basically won the national championship for Texas. If he doesn't make that play, SC controls the ball and probably runs the clock out. If he doesn't make that decision to, to attack the line of scrimmage, you know, 35 and roll and three national titles. He can walk the streets of Austin, Texas. He's a god among men. No matter how you view Pete Carroll's decisions in the 2006 Rose Bowl, there's no doubt he's led USC back to national prominence. In the five years prior to his arrival, the Trojans were 31 and 29. In his first five years in Los Angeles, USC is 54 and 10 with two national championships. I'm Brian Kenny. Thanks for watching.